Good evening. India's human computer, also known as the mental calculator, Mathwiz Shakuntala Devi, passed away early on early Sunday, uh, aged 83. Ms. Devi, who was suffering from respiratory problems and later developed heart and kidney complications, had been in a Bangalore hospital for two weeks. Ms. Devi held the Guinness World Record for her lightning speed calculations. Among her distinctions was her ability to, given a date in the last century, mentally ascertain the day. Through the medium of this show, we pay our tribute and respects to the mathematical genius who many say never really got her due. And that's the central theme of the big picture tonight. India is a country that produces heroes that never really get their due. You and I are often guilty of making demigods out of just two kinds of heroes, cricketers and film stars. In a country of 1.2 billion people, there are countless heroes who excel at what they do in their chosen fields. Be it sports, science, literature, the arts, diplomacy, social workers, activists, I could go on. But the point is this. Why do these heroes become unsung most of the time? Why is this country so obsessed with idolizing just film stars and cricketers? Is it just the illusion of glamour? Is the frenzy media-generated hype? Why does every child in the country want to emulate a Sachin Tendulkar and not an MS Swaminathan? And that's just one example, not taking anything away from the great opener. Let's talk about this tonight on The Big Picture. Why do Indian heroes who are non-cricketers and are not huge film stars ever get their due? And even if they do, can they match the kind of admiration, loyalty, respect and recognition that the Bollywood demigods and our cricketing crackerjacks get? These questions and more tonight on The Big Picture. Joining me will be Dilip Cherian, image guru and founder, Perfect Relations, noted scientist Amitabh Pandey and a social commentator, uh, an academic and writer, Professor Pushpesh Pant. He is also on the panel. Welcome, gentlemen, to the program. Uh, I'd like to start with Mr. Charyan, if I could. Would you agree that India and Indians, and I'm not saying everyone, just an unsettling majority of us, uh, tend to restrict their admiration, uh, their awe, their undying loyalty and reverence to either some big movie star or a cricket great? Hardly ever do we see a mandir in the name of, uh, say, APJ Abdul Kalam or even an Amartya Sen, but there is a mandir for every other starlet in South Indian cinema. That's just an example. Why is that? You know, since we are a kind of Google generation, mm. if, you, if you Google for Indian heroes, you fortunately get a slightly larger uh, subtext, shall I say, of people. You can throw in the odd big money bags mm. and some obvious uh, nationally recognized politicians. Mm. But otherwise, it pretty much follows the track what you said. Mm. And now, in, in my, in my uh, personal sort of watching of the Indian image landscape, I would say the other creature that's been added on, with no insult to any, any of them, are media-created heroes. Hmm. So, for example, the other day I was in a studio and I realized that a radio jockey was being mobbed for a picture. So, you know, uh, 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 the kind of genotype I had not really encountered or known was so popular. So I think there is what I call an easy predictability factor to the kinds of people we choose to make heroes of. Right. Um, but hero worship is very old in the country and therefore we, we have to have our heroes but we find them in the most obvious places. Right. Would you agree, Professor Pushpesh Pan, that we, we are very obvious when it comes to creating demigods and heroes? And, and do you agree with the reasons that Dilip just said? Uh, is it just the glamour associated with films and sports entertainment, if I could call it that? Or are there deeper, more complicated reasons? I think it's like the Charlie Brown comics. You know, you mm. have a security blanket which you cling on to mm. and then you are comfortable with that. Mm. I mean, but let's get back to Shakuntala Devi. I remember when I was an adolescent. She was a great heroine. Mm. And it is also a generational shift. You know, I mean, why did she become famous as she did? And why are we prefacing our discussion with mm. her, mm. paying tribute to her? Mm. And why did she just stop there? I mean, R Ramanujam, there's that great book, The Man Who Knew Infinity. Right. If she did not know infinity, she at least flirted sufficiently with infinity. Mm. Was she another Ramanujam in the making who could not make it because she never met the Hardy? Mm. Or she was a woman? I also recall reading, this is not the right moment to talk about it, mm. that she had an unhappy married life. Right, right. And we recall that her father was a circus performer. Right, he's a trapeze now, artist. A trapeze yeah, artist. Yeah, yeah. Now, you see the problem is that there, are, there have been other cases from the field like Luganis to Shakuntala Devi to uh, Michael Jackson mm. or to Serena uh, Williams sisters, mm. where parents make their children performing artists. I almost said performing monkeys. Mm. Mm. And then their potential for realizing their genius is lost. Right. Shakuntala Devi is a very interesting example, an exception because mathematics 
still, I mean, just before we began the program, we were discussing um, Aryabhat and mm. who discovered mm. zero and right. so on. So, Indians have some kind of a nationalistic patriotic pride that mathematics is our special genius. Right. We have a Brahmbuk, Bhaskaracharya, Leela a woman mathematician. We have a rich tradition of rich mathematicians. Tradition. Yeah. And Shakuntala Devi somehow seemed to reinforce that. Right. So, the nationalistic patriotic uh, pull drew right, to her, right, right. but then she ultimately was, uh, maths most of us find boring, right. uh, difficult. Complicated. And, and so it sort of, there is a certain kind of a esoteric attraction towards it. I take one point from what you just said and I would like to go back to, to that, uh, what parents pushing their children to do whatever they, they think is best, but I'll come to that in, in a bit. I want to come to Amitabh Pandey right now. Who were your heroes, sir, when you were growing up? And, and, and why did you want to do what you eventually did? I asked you this because I want to get a sense of what people really, uh, who excel in their spheres, go, go through mentally when they decide to break away from the herd. Mm, I don't remember any hero when hmm. I was a child. Hmm. I was born up in a very small town, in a, a school which have tart patti, we had to carry our mattress from home, hmm. like that. Hmm. We didn't have any hero when the China war broke out. We had our hero teachers who died mm -hmm. in the war. Mm -hmm. Teacher also went to fight in China war. Right. So coming so back. So like yeah. uh, I interact with children all the time. I am a science communicator also, mm -hmm. and I found that every child when he's growing up, say in a sixth standard or seventh standard, he want to be a scientist. Mm -hmm. He want to be a space scientist. He want to be astronaut. Something happened in our education. Doctor Prashant will tell us better, tell you better. Something happened, and that this scientist is killed. This artist is killed. Every child is an artist, natural artist. Picasso said the artist is a person who always remains a child. Hmm. So we have we have we have mastered this art of killing a talent, a hero in a child. In a child. So do you think our education system is to blame for that, or just that, and many other reasons as well? Yeah, it's main very important responsibility goes to education system. Then comes media. Hmm. Media creates hero. They're all these hero that we are the, the river and I believe they, they are the media created hero, like mm. cricketers, film stars. Mm. Without media, they will die like mm. a fish out of water. Right. But their real heroes are still, like say, looked up. Mm. And real heroes are like say our uh, soldiers fighting war at the border. Our scientists. Uh, when I go to small town villages, people think I'm some kind of god. Mm. They take my autograph. Mm. I said I'm not some great scientist. Believe me. No, they, so thing is that we had to nurture this thing in every child, this number game. I said a sheer number game. 80% of our talents are killed because they can't, they don't have access to good school. Hmm. Uh, in villages, small towns, uh, they are, they're, they're, they're so called public school, they're actually private school, are killing education as well as the government school killing I education. I want to come to leave right now. How important is the recognition factor in this? He said that after probably class five or six, they suddenly stopped want, you know, they don't want to become scientists anymore. Nobody wants to be an astronaut anymore. Uh, they want to be cricketers, film stars, models even, or what have you. Uh, you're an image group. Does, does recognition and the fact that the glamour is associated with it, does that have to do with the majority of it? I think it's, you know, if you, if you cut to the chase, mm. it's got to do with the pressure to deliver incomes. Mm. So, mm. Uh, it's a bit of a thing which, you know, which uh, Dr. Pan said mm. of, you know, creating performing fleas mm. because performing fleas generate income instantly. Right. Take the case of gymnasts on the street Absolutely. who are begging. So the idea is that make them earn as early as possible. Mm. And I think there is that this is probably mm. the mm. first generation in India which has in a sense at some level in numbers, in significant numbers, broken free of this shackles of needing an income instantly. Right. Which is why you're seeing now you're seeing chefs, you're seeing trapeze artists, you're seeing uh, puppeteers, you know, you're seeing a new flowering as it were. Hmm. So perhaps we'll have to wait for this economic confidence or this kind of safety net to grow for a while before parents will allow their children to follow their real heroes. But that economic confidence hasn't come or even touched the Indian middle class. No, right? it, hasn't. it hasn't. It hasn't. Uh, we'll come back to this. I want to come to Professor Pushpes Pant in just a bit with the question that I had him for. But first, we'll take a small break. A very interesting discussion coming up on The Big Picture. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Welcome back to The Big Picture. India's unsung heroes uh, are what we are talking about tonight on The Big Picture. Professor Pushpesh Pant, before the break, you talked about a really important point. Now, can we really blame the parents who push their kids uh, into becoming, say, 
I'm talking about the Indian middle class here, either cricketers or film stars, uh, because uh, they all encourage them to go for the world of glamour per se, because they see these two professions as the only guaranteed vocations where the quintess quintessential Indian uh, middle class wish list come becomes or can become reality, namely uh, name, fame, uh, money, uh, or you know, you either become a politician no, I, or a vocation. I, I, I don't really think we can blame the parents. Mm. I think that's where what Dilip said is very, very mm. uh, seminal, almost. Um, is the media which creates that these are the stereotypes where the money can be made and made astronomically. Mm. Just before we entered this studio, mm. again with Amitabh, we were having this discussion in this place of origin, Bhind and Ravines and Pan Singh Tomar came right, up. Right. And you could even bring Pulan Devi before that, you mm. can bring Raja Man Singh before that, Daku Lakka, mm. etc. But the point is that, that you have a country where a cricketer, a one-time appearance, can give you hundreds of millions of rupees in prize money, endorsements, etc. Right. You could have a boxer who gets a bronze medal mm. and becomes almost a national hero for 15 minutes of his celebrity. Mm. And next day, from a hero to villain, uh, and then of course he refuses to go for a drug test and goes after the three month uh, cooling period is over right. and there's this interesting discussion. Mm. So I think if, as long as the media lets the parents get the impression mm. that their child will make millions if he can become a cricketer mm. or a film star and there's an, another interesting element here. Mm. You think that there is a game in a casino, you are, the, you are gambling. If you gamble on your child becoming a cricketer, even an IP league appearance would be Kulja Simpson. Right. But if he is supposed to toil as a neurosurgeon mm -hmm. or an agricultural scientist. Seven years study medicine. No, forget about study. Mm -hmm. The funding of the medicine, mm -hmm. education. I mean, you, you are not spending that kind of thing. You know, mm -hmm. cricket by chance wala jo right, muhavra right, right, hai. Right. So all parents believe that the run of the luck will be in their child's favor. Mm -hmm. So it is that this lottery element, if you contest an election and win, winner takes all. Right. So this society this democracy, so-called democracy, which allows the winner to take all. How do you blame a parent for that? No, you so can't really blame the no, parents. Absolutely. It's the system then. Before I come to Amitabh Pandey, I want to go very quickly to Mr. Dilip Charyan now. But even these two worlds, and I'm pretty sure you're associated with both of them and you know uh, the inner workings of these. Um, Films and cricket, they're also part of an illusion that, oh, these people have such fantastic lives and they lead these glamorous lives and uh, they earn so much money, fame, respect, what have you. Um, doing something that most people believe, and I know this is a myth, uh, that they're doing easy jobs and that, that their job is so easy, I could do it better sitting here and blah, blah, blah. But people think like that. Do you think that's also part of that illusion and that, that, that is something we suffer from? You know, it's, it's partially an illusion, but also remember, the best way to measure whether a career or a, a kind of chosen profession is something which is actually easier than it is, is to see whether the number of children of successful parents being pushed into that profession is high or not. Right. So what is happening is that the world of films clearly, mm. though there are, there are great new artists born a minute, there mm. are Vidya Balans mm. being flung at you, all of that, but at the end of the day, the proof of the pudding is that the number of star parents who are pushing their children into that is proof that the living's easy. Yes. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. I think and I think we have to see that in the case of politicians because the way politics has now become an inherited profession mm. is further proof that we think it's it's no longer the heroism which is pushing you in there. It's just a it good is, life. It is just the good life mm. and the what I call uh, ROI, return on investment. Mm. The amount you invest, you know, you get your returns up unmeasurably higher. Right. So, to create a hero as a society, Shakuntala Devi is a great example and all of us belong to a certain generation which saw her perform like a flea in school mm. and said, oh, wow, maths. Why doesn't an Indian corporate, for example, invest in a, in a maths B, like a spelling like B a spelling contest? Bee, yeah. You yeah. Know? And given the fact that we have this native genius for maths, we should really be looking at creating a mathematical hero mm. who then allows their full genius to flower. But we don't even do that. So hmm. the, what I mean is the hotbed to create heroes also does not exist. Right. So that's a, that's a fact. That brings thing. me to the next question. And Amitabh Pandey, I want to ask you this. How far do you think successive administration, I'm not talking about one particular government, but generally the system as a whole, has failed in one, 
giving unsung heroes their due, and I'm not talking about money or awards, I'm talking about recognition and respect as well. Uh, and two, to evoke interest in fields like, you know, that, that people won't really talk about otherwise. Uh, that India has a wealth of talent in, mathematics for example. We have brilliant scientists, doctors, uh, research and development, R&D. Um, what have you, whatever. But do you think successive governments have, you know, failed at some level like that? Mm, uh, like the, uh, people say Pakistan is a failed state. I also believe India is a failed state. In that particular respect. India is a failed state in a sense that 80% of masses, Dalit, mm. or, or, uh, tribals, OBC, they still not come up to the like, say, level of the citizen. They are treated as second grade citizen. And the women, they are not got due in parliament. 35% seat they are asking for not something big. They have not got it here. So the pool of talent in our society, say 90 percent pool is wasted, wasting away in the school where there is no blackboard, where there is no teacher, there is roof, there's no roof over, over their head. So how we expect to have heroes in this country? Right. To have heroes, we have to have a, 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 every child should get his due in education. In, in say that the chance in life to come up, hmm. then we can have heroes. Heroes are made in, in, in everyday life. So then we can expect, say, if we, if we can have make India become a real nation hmm. where the, the nation take care of children, the republic take care of children, then only we can hope in say next 20 or 30 years we may have talents, we may have heroes, we may have great. And it's a long, long, long path ahead. Long, Professor long Pushpesh Pant, do you agree that we have failed as a state? as a nation to promote these... these. Uh... I, I would agree entirely with Amitabh. Mm -hmm. I would say that we have not only failed to promote these potential heroes, we have failed in on various fronts. Mm -hmm. And the reasons he has given, I would not like to repeat. Mm -hmm. I think it's a sad commentary that uh, we have a film, Bhag Milka Fag, mm -hmm. celebrating the heroism or the role model, trying to project mm -hmm. a role model of an athlete mm -hmm. who missed the bronze medal by the tenth of a second about half a century that, back. That says a lot about us, That says it? a lot yeah, about yeah, us that yeah. we... And also how many people would remember poor Milka Singh, hmm. if Jeev Milka was not a more glamorous golfer uh, getting international probably, recognition. Probably we won't. My generation probably wouldn't. And I'm being very honest here. Dilip, do you think that we suffer from that kind of a, a mentality that uh, Milka Singh was a great athlete, no doubt about it. Uh, but he missed the bronze and he, he never stood on the podium in the Olympics. But we still are lionizing him. We're idolizing him. We lionized Kalpana Chavla who was an NRI. Absolutely. We would have uh, Sunila Williams who's there. We, who's we there? tried to claim Harbin Khurawala's Nobel Prize. We tried to claim... Are, are we so short of Teresa. heroes inside the country? I think we are short of... I said the first thing is the the recognition of the appropriate heroes. Absolutely. You know, one, one kind of thing which is actually now emerging, and I'm glad it is, it's a good sign, since we're all talking gloom and doom here, mm -hmm. is that for the first time I'm seeing that social change heroes are being made much of. Mm -hmm. Perhaps this is a harbinger of the fact that government is going to impose pressure on corporates to spend money on CSR. Mm -hmm. But for the first time you're seeing that some people who are generating social change are being recognized and are being seen as heroes. And as a result, at least in the, the richer and the upper middle class, there are many children today whose heroes are people who are striving for social change. Right. So I think this is a good thing. Hmm. And I think we need to go with these, these new easy wins and find many more cases to replicate them in. Right. Because today, whether it's uh, nanotechnology, whether it's microbiology, whether there is astronomy. Mm. The idea is that push these winners forward. Media has to play a role mm. and without, a, and fortunately social media today can do a part of that, you know, the, the flexibility is available. So I think there is room and I think India has a long way to go. I agree with both these gentlemen mm. that we've failed miserably as a state in mm. doing it, as, as a society, I would say. Right. And I think that opportunities now exist. Can you imagine the potential heroes who will be unlocked if actually these children were to go to school, if people who wanted to... Or get know, proper playground. Or, or, just, or get just proper nutrition. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. We'll take a small break right now. I'm going to come back to my three guests and, and discuss the role of the media, which is very critical, and all my guests would agree, with, very critical uh, in this particular issue. Take a break, come back. The big picture continues after the break. Welcome back to the big picture. Amitabh Pandey, let me ask you this. Uh, Media is something that uh, Dilip Jayan specializes in, but w what's your view on it? How has the media really played? Me the media, Indian media, electronic media particularly, is not a very, very old animal. It's a new animal, relatively new animal. But do you think the last 10, 15 years, 
because we all agree the Indian media, electronic media has sort of dumbed down, I don't think anyone would, 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 would dispute that, but do you think that also had a negative impact on the kind of heroes we actually want to prop up? Yes, that uh, most of the, the electronic media which is dominant is uh, private channels mm. and they are TRP driven mm. and the TRP driven madness actually mm. is uh, uh, another culprit right. in this. So, and they are, let's say, that's uh, five minutes of fame people are looking for, so they are... Uh, so, you do agree that the media has played a sort of uh, role yeah, that... Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the pictures you see most of the time, either uh, 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 the bomb blast, of course, you have to report that, mm -hmm. and then uh, go mad after that. Like, mm -hmm. say, that's just repeating the same thing, and then the real thing that is uh, coming out of the, the country's real problems are hardly mentioned, mm -hmm. hardly mentioned. So the people working in those areas are uh, nowhere in the in the big picture. Right, right. So we don't really see, uh, you know, uh, prime time, uh, the daytime prime time. We don't really see anyone I, showing I, documentaries. We I see think, soap opera stuff. Know, I, I think what Amitabh is saying has a deeper level to it. Mm -hmm. I think we, the media should realize mm. that all heroes are not necessarily celebrities, right. but they deserve to be celebrities before they become role models. Absolutely. And yeah. all celebrities mm. cannot possibly be projected as heroes all the time. Mm. We talked of the broadening of the category of mm. heroes, the chefs and the others. But the problem is that you still are trying to focus that if you become a celebrity chef, life would be easier, you would be richer. Absolutely. Now the point is that if what he talks about, the real hero is one who may not be rich, one who may not be beautiful, mm. but he's been bold enough to put his neck on the chopper mm. to save somebody. Right. So I think true heroism is to grappling with challenges which confront this nation. But the media doesn't like such heroes. They, they, they find them boring. You know, Amitabh mentioned the problem of TRPs, mm. but the quintessential factor of the media today is Jalak Dikade. You know, it's Absolutely. basically... You hit that. the nail okay. bang on the head, so yes. So it's, it's can, you, can you reduce this to a bite-sized 15 seconds of expression, of beauty, and a glimpse of great talent? You know, the fact is that real talent cannot express itself, just simply cannot express itself in, in that 50, compressed in, capsule. In 15 second bites. Meaning, you know, some of us are, are trained performing freeze for television, but other than that, a real thinking person mm. would have difficulty in being able to compress it, to say it succinctly, and to perform to please. Has the dumbing down of the media, sir, also, is also, is that a result, and I think you might agree, is also a result of generally the kind of entertainment that we as a society want to watch. We have dumbed down and hence the media has. In fact, I, I tend to not blame media entirely for mm -hmm. this because I always say the master of the TRP is sitting in each home with a, with a remote in their hand. Right. So that, that aside, I think, you know, what is, what is also missing is that because we have as a nation, are so richly endowed in history, we don't give history or, or these historic trends importance anymore. Right. So, for example, what Pushpesh mentioned, a chef who can turn out an omelette in 14 seconds is a great hero, mm. but somebody who uncovers a great recipe is not a hero or a heroine. And I think we need to do that. And I think once we do this, people get worshipful quite fast hmm. because as an as a people we are quite happy worshiping on the nearest obelisk that's av available to us so that would be easy absolutely first part is to break that you know that, that, that mindset. conundrum yeah, that conundrum. yeah. Uh, amita very quickly uh, and i'm going to wrap up the show very soon uh, who comes to mind if you want to think about it that and that you think about and say oh that person never really got his due among your heroes among your contemporaries who comes to mind top of your list teachers teachers, teachers. they never really get their due yeah teachers and professors. Yeah. If I asked you the same question, uh, and, and if you could make it more specific, uh, any person that you thought, oh, there, there it is, he, he or she was a brilliant star or a brilliant performer or a brilliant hero, never really got his or her due. You know, I would say that I would look at, for example, theatre. Mm. We have great heroes in Indian theatre, unknown names. Mm. And I would say, for example, um, a guy like Ashok Raina mm. and the kind of work he's done, mm. he's, he deserves credit. Mm. Wildlife conservators no longer and they should be heroes because these are the people who are saving tigers and leopards you talk of a Valmik Thapar or Absolutely. X or Y these are the people who deserve to be lauded for what they are right same question sir we have to wind up the show Jain Nardikar he at one stage was supposed to be one of those seminal scientists right, or the right. alternative theory of the birth of universe Absolutely, yeah. uh, story writer for children mm. and writing in Marathi mm. a great person 
never made it to the fellowship of the Royal Society and the Thappa was not there mm. and the Indians ceased to take interest in him. Right, on that note sir, I'm running out of time. I must thank all you gentlemen for coming on this show. It was a really interesting show and I think my, uh, our audience also got some interesting insights from Amitabh Pandey, thank you so much for joining us. Mr. Dilip Cherian as well as Professor Pushpesh. Mm -hmm. That's all the time we have on the Big Picture tonight. Atha Khan saying goodbye, good night and thank you for watching.